Good morning traders. It is Thursday, November the 14th. Taking a look at the chart here, you can see yesterday we had a strong uh, move up. We had a gap down in the morning, strong move up in the uh, early morning, another continued move into the afternoon. We had another little pause there in the afternoon and more or less had another one of these strong uh, surges into the close to new highs. Very similar to what we saw back here when we had that news related move. We had a uh, very strong move going up into the close. More or less, the fact that we closed up there at some new highs uh, led uh, a lot of short covering into the close. If price didn't reverse down going into the final 30 minutes or 10 minutes there, anybody who was still short would be covering their short, and that's what really fueled that fire into the close, pushing the markets up uh, pretty much to an, an overbought territory. Now, if we just take a quick look at the overall bar chart market momentum index, here we've got the overbought territory is at the 101 area. And yesterday we came up uh, pretty close to that level. So we're not really deep into a overbought territory, but it definitely pushed and stretched itself to the, uh, the limit there to the upside yesterday. Now if we just take a look at the advancing declining volume, the key numbers here on the NYSE, which is, is the main focus here, the advancing declining shares you can see we had a pretty strong ratio of about uh, five to one so five buyers to every one seller that is a level where usually if everybody's running in one direction the next day we'll see a bit of a pause or a pullback so this morning we're really not seeing much going on with the equities market it's pretty much trading flat and uh, could easily uh, see it continue to trade sideways this morning now if we take a look at the futures chart of a very similar situation we had there last week or uh, sorry, uh, earlier this week, you can see after we had this strong move, let me just move back to this chart here. We had this strong move on Friday, strong move to the upside, and then consolidated. We had that powerful squeeze going into the close again. Well, the next trading session was a very, very narrow range. This is this was the whole next uh, trading trading session right here. You wouldn't even know it looks like after hours trading because it was really no movement. It's the tightest range we've seen in a very long time. The price just really just went to absolutely nothing. A little bit of volatility in the morning and pretty much just uh, died out right throughout the session. Very, very small movement. Of course, from there, after we had that strong move up, we saw price give back some of that uh, strong rally that we had on Friday with some volatility as volatility picked up eventually we got that uh, looks like a intermediate bottom there and we had a nice strong three wave rally yesterday uh, putting us up, up into overbought territory now just looking at the price action where we're trading this morning in pre-market trading here is yesterday's price action on the left with all the volume and uh, more or less the market closed right here and in overnight trading, we've seen it continue to drift up. That This upward momentum is carrying through in overnight trading. Traders around the globe, more or less, uh, uh, jumping on that bandwagon, kind of carrying that momentum up. And we'll see if that actually stalls out and we see some of that move eventually get given back uh, today. Now, there's going to be a couple key levels of support. Looking at the volume by price, you can see the close yesterday, heavy volume. This is going to act as a support level. For price to come back down that'll be yesterday's closing price so if it does gap up we'll likely see it come down and touch that level to fill that gap and and then before it continues to go higher another key level of support looking at the volume by price is right here we had a consolidation you can see the high volume through that level if price comes down there it'll likely have some type of bounce if it breaks through that level the next key support zone is this even higher volume level around the 1763 area at which time price could continue to fall down to that level and uh, and put it into possibly an oversold market condition but I doubt it it's not quite far enough uh, for that to happen but that's kind of where we're looking for key support zones on an intraday basis and uh, what is likely to uh, kind of unfold going forward here now taking a look at energies here is the crude oil chart. We're seeing crude oil. It's continuing to flirt around down at this uh, these support trend lines. We had a strong move down earlier this week. We had a pop up yesterday, a little one, 
and it's it's continuing to fade down again uh, has been pointing out we want to see something like this volatility pick up some some wild price action there looks as though we're starting to get a little bit we had a little bit of a bounce yesterday after it came down tag that uh, support trend line we really want to see it flush out to the 92 possibly even spike below there into the 91 if we just zoom into the price action ideally we want to see it spike right down through this level and then and then have a, a, a pop up to the 96 if it can break this uh, little resistance level right across here and we see price spike down with sharp reversal to the upside then it could be off to the races for it to start to uh, recover and work its way higher looking at natural gas it's been moving up the past couple days as the equity markets kind of been chopping around and we can see here it had a, a big a big move up in the last two sessions and uh, yesterday and this morning we're starting to see it more or less pull back a little bit if we just zoom into this price, recent, recent price action it looks as though it could be trying to form a bottom you can see we've got level across here where it has come down kind of tag that level uh, the fact that it's had a, a couple big gaps to the upside and then sold off isn't a good sign but it is holding up still overall there's going to be a lot of uh, a key resistance zone right across here we've got this these pivot highs on the chart we had a breakout here we had a consolidation through here tagged here as resistance we tagged here as resistance in the, this week we're pulling back overall though if it can get some stability it could chop around here and then it could continue to move higher but overall this chart very messy with all these gaps and we're not really looking to get uh, too involved in natural gas just yet taking a look at the US dollar index is the UUP ETF that mimics the US dollar uh, you can see here more or less we've come up into a resistance zone right across here which is obviously a key pivot low another key pivot low uh, a clear breakdown level and now we've come up to that level we've hit our head on it and we're starting to head back down now as the US dollar heads down it can help lift precious metals a little bit it can potentially help lift the equities market now the way the US dollar has been working this year really it hasn't given much insight into how it's going to affect uh, equities and precious metals uh, last year it was pretty much almost tick for tick most of the time if the dollar was down stocks uh, would be up and uh, and say with precious metals but overall this year has been completely random in how the US dollar is affecting uh, commodities and the equities market so overall I do feel as though we're going to be chopping around here we do have a, a key consolidation right through here obviously consolidation consolidation a little bit of a mini breakout level so it could chop around form some type of handle here so we have a possible uh, if we were to just draw it out here a, a cup and handle and from there it could actually continue to extend to the second uh, measured move which will be up by this previous pivot high but uh, overall the US dollar index uh, still in a downtrend and it's just had a pop it is yet to make a higher high uh, it's made very minor higher highs here this is a significant high that really needs to be broken before the trend could be actually be reversed back to the upside so overall it's just been a bounce and now it's heading back down looking at the chart of bonds uh, yesterday we saw uh, bond prices move up again uh, overall still in a downtrend and uh, it really needs to be breaking breakout through this uh, 136 ish area uh, overall a little bit oversold we did break run this previous low so we got a big wash out there with the news uh, last week now it's having a bit of a knee-jerk reaction bounce back up overall we're not really looking to get into bonds just yet it looks as though it's trying to build a pretty significant basing pattern as I pointed out earlier uh, this big picture kind of analysis that even that plays with the, uh, precious metals also if we were to look forward a few months I do feel as though we're gonna see a large basing pattern form here eventually we're gonna see price uh, break out above this level and we could see it have a huge move to the upside for bonds and that's very similar for precious metals and of course if this plays out uh, this means the equities market will be putting in a major top as bonds are putting in a significant uh, bottom here 
and same with precious metals and the equities market will sell off and have a, a very sharp correction and money will flow back into likely gold will be the the uh, the main mover and uh, and bonds should be moving up also taking a look at precious metals real quick here is the gold chart here is the four hour chart of gold continues to be an overall downtrend lower highs lower lows had a little bit of a bounce the last couple trading sessions uh, again if we just zoom back a little bit you can see that it's trying to build a possible major basing pattern let's just go to the daily chart get a let's go to the weekly chart actually this is more or less where I feel we are working our way to somewhere very similar to this I feel as though we're getting a, a major correction uh, increased volatility I think eventually we're going to see a break and we could see uh, gold really take off to the upside but uh, right now it is still chopping around consolidating we could easily see prices uh, really have a sharp drop to a new low and it could actually have a knee-jerk reaction back up here for a huge rally to test for a double high could go parabolic but um, that's getting way ahead of ourselves overall this is a type of bottoming pattern that we saw back here starting to play out but again you get some of the biggest moves some of the biggest flush outs of uh, of long positions during these uh, final stages of a pullback so overall we're, we're building that position uh, or it's building this pattern and eventually we're probably going to see a strong knee-jerk reaction up to the 1600 area possibly the 1800 and um, and beyond depending how the economy how everything unfolds but all this this is big picture weekly stuff we're talking uh, it could take a year or two for all this stuff is price action here to uh, unfold Looking at the <clears throat> chart of silver, let's just go to the weekly chart also, just keep it in line. You can see where we stand in the grand scheme of things, zooming back. We've already seen silver go straight up. It's consolidated here. Instead of continuing up, it's actually broken down to uh, more of a, a lower low, come down to a key support zone here, this $20 uh, per ounce level it's chopping around and if it can get some stability and start to break up above this previous high let's just zoom in a bit here again if we were to compare charts it could be something very similar to this it's starting to unfold we really do need to see it break a previous pivot high like back here this is going to be a significant pivot high obviously we have a little consolidation right here also so it's a pretty clear breakout around the 24 25 area similar to what we saw back here and uh, if we can eventually get that then we could be off to the races again for silver to go up to the uh, uh, possibly 28 even 36 area and and beyond now taking a look at gold miners just see how they've been performing very similar to gold I kinda like the silver miners chart almost the most Overall, though, just the way the price action is forming, I feel as though it uh, it's starting to become a an old stagnant downtrend. It's picked up. It's had an increase in volatility. The fact now that uh, instead of these sell-offs having this kind of rounded formation where it picks up speed to the downside, kind of goes up here and then picks up speed and drops off and pauses and then drops. These this type of price action is very bearish, but when you start to get an impulse wave. And, and then you get a strong reaction to more or less a push to, to some new highs and then you get this drag out kind of sell-off it's not a waterfall sell where it picks up speed it just kind of let, uh, drags out and then you get a little bit of a bounce and then it drags out again this is a sign that prices the downward momentum is stalling and eventually this one of these will turn into a major bull flag and it will start to work its way higher and we could see a huge move to the upside but again this is uh, still potentially several months of a, a play for this breakout of this basing pattern and if we do get some good uh, internal uh, price action some bullish price action we could be able to get on the train a little early but uh, overall the, the odds are still pointing to lower prices yet anyways that's it for this morning and I'll talk to you in a little bit bye bye